Fire is a fundamental earth system process. Behind climate, it is the most important factor that determines vegetation across the earth. In 2019, 2020, we saw some of the worst fires, if not arguably the worst fires that Australia has ever experienced. It's been a bit of a wake up call for us to realize that we actually don't know enough about fire in the Australian landscape. Understanding about fire in the landscape requires a detailed knowledge of the fire ecology and the way that organisms respond to fire and forests respond to fire. But also it requires an understanding of the history of fire in this landscape. And that's a really fundamental question is about what is the, the relationship through time between fire and the Australian landscape. The first is climate. Climate determines where things are and where they grow and what kind of organisms live there. And the next most important factor globally is fire. And if you can switch fire off, you would actually see a doubling in forest cover across the earth. And that's a really critical insight into the way that fire acts in the earth system, especially for a place like Australia, where a vast majority of the forests are highly flammable, super flammable forests dominated by eucalypts. Humans have been using fire for around about 2 million years, between 1.7 and 2 million years. And fire has been fundamental in shaping human thought processes, human physiology, uh, human behaviour since that time. And fire is attributed to unlocking potential of our food, increasing the energy bounty of our food and powering this critical engine for our evolution. And we have the, the greatest brain to body size ratio of any animal on Earth. Fire has also uh, changed us physiologically Making our food easier to chew has changed the kind of teeth arrangement we have and other various features of our body have slowly changed because we've altered the kinds of foods we eat and the kinds of things we do because we've mastered this incredibly powerful tool. 50 to 40,000 years ago, all of Australia was occupied by people, by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who had a sophisticated, and deep connection with fire and an application of fire in the landscape. Humans are able to change when and where fires burn, which then changes the kind of plants and animals that we see around us today. The impact of fire on the Australian landscape following the arrival of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people into Australia is a hugely debated topic. It ranges from a negligible impact to such a radical transformation that it actually changed part of the climate cycle over Australia and resulted in the drying up of our interior lakes, Lake Eyre and other places. This is an active area of research that a number of us are working on and people are really concerted effort to try and understand what was the actual impact. Uh, there are other lines of evidence that showed that um, Aboriginal landscape transformation was one of the contributing factors that resulted in the demise of the megafauna, large animals above 70 kilos, which we still have a few today. But what we do know is that even in the driest areas today and the wettest areas today, the removal of Aboriginal landscape management following British invasion resulted in radical transformation. Following the arrival of the British, Aboriginal ways of life were severely disrupted. And we know from our investigation into the impact of that arrival and that dispossession and the massacres of Aboriginal people. And in a space of around 70 years, even less in Tasmania, you see a huge change in the landscape from the reports of early explorers, uh, settlers, people writing in their journals. We know that the landscape of Australia, right at the period of that invasion and a few decades afterwards, is a radically different landscape than we see today. Landscapes that were described as open, grassy, uh, places where you could ride horses four or five abreast through the landscape, unimpeded, places that were treeless, and now today, forested, densely forested. If you think about fire, fire requires three critical elements. At the base level, it requires an ignition, fuel, and oxygen. 
So what in effect has happened, we've seen an increase in the amount of fuel. In some areas where it's been measured, it's up to 10 times, an order of magnitude more woody fuels in the landscape following the removal of Aboriginal cultural burning. And now we have this situation where there's vast areas of forest that have high fuel loads and that aren't actively managed. Cultural burning, Aboriginal burning, traditional burning, Aboriginal land management with fire is a deeply sophisticated cultural practice that is performed for a whole series of reasons. One of the net impacts of cultural burning on a landscape is to reduce landscape fuel loads. One thing we do know is that areas subjected to Indigenous or Aboriginal cultural burning today experience less catastrophic bushfire. This is from the top end mainly. We see where Indigenous land management, where cultural burning is returned to ecosystems, we see a decrease in the incidence of huge, hot, catastrophic bushfires in savannah ecosystems. We're sitting on a toolkit here, a potential way of managing the Australian landscape, Aboriginal cultural burning, traditional burning, that can be added to our existing toolkit to manage the vast forested estates and beyond in Australia. And there's a real opportunity right now, following these catastrophic fires of 2019, 2020, and following the Royal Commission into these fires to implement where possible cultural burning programs to help mitigate against the risk of catastrophic climate-driven bushfires in the future.